Good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm Clio Chavano, co-organizer of Cinemana Contemporary Arab Film uh, Series, an event uh, running since 2016 and jointly organized between the film department of NYUED, uh, Art Center NYUED, and uh, the sociology department of Sorbonne Abu Dhabi. Um, so thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight. And I would like to welcome uh, our guests. So uh, first, uh, Abdulhaman El Madani, uh, filmmaker of the three uh, short films you just watched. Uh, so he's an Emirati filmmaker born in Dubai. He began making films as a student uh, in 2012 with his uh, first documentary, uh, The Gamboa Revolution. Uh, which won several awards uh, in Abu Dhabi Film Festival, um, if I am um, right. And then he shifted to narrative filmmaking with uh, first a silent film called Guilt, um, made in uh, 2013, and uh, followed by uh, the anti bullying drama that you just watched, uh, Nagafa, in 2014. Uh, he also received a diploma in filmmaking from the uh, New York Film uh, Academy in 2015, where he graduated with his with the thesis film uh, called uh, Beshara uh, in uh, the same year, 2015. And then in 2019, he directed and produced uh, the short film uh, Leimoun uh, with the support of the Sharjah Art Foundation. Uh, and he have ongoing project that you will maybe uh, tell us if a little bit about uh, tonight. Uh, and then I'm glad to welcome also uh, Dr. Doris uh, Ambour, uh, who is Associate Professor in the Department of uh, Languages and Literature at the Uni uh, United Arab Emirates uh, University. Uh, so Dr. Doris does research in literature and film studies. Her publication include articles on Caribbean uh, literature, uh, eco-criticism and film analysis. She also served as vice president and program chair of the Canadian Comparative Literature Association. And uh, her current research project focuses on Emirati cinema and eco poetry. And for the one interested, she published several articles on Emirati uh, cinema and especially short films. So thank you both tonight and uh, thank you uh, for accepting our invitation for, uh, the, to screen and also to discuss now um, both of you together, but also with the audience, um, the, the three short films that um, that you uh, presented. Um, so I will let Dr. Doris directly uh, start and um, ask the, maybe the first question, and I will be um, taking the question of, from the audience. So feel free to write in the chat uh, your questions, and I will um, ask them uh, for you. Thank you very much. Is, Thank uh, you very much for the introductions and many thanks also to everyone at Cinemana for putting this showcase together. I think it's an excellent opportunity. I hope that at least some of my students were able to make the time to be here with us. I do teach uh, currently a course on uh, cinema in the Arab world and I place a specific emphasis on the Gulf region and so on. I hope they will also have their questions asked. Um, I, it's a great pleasure for me to be part of this question and answer. I have uh, been observing Abdul Rahman's career for a good decade now. When I first saw that the uh, Gambua revolution and it impressed me so much that uh, I went ahead and invited him to be among our guests at the first film studies open day at UAEU. And since then, I have admired uh, both the choice of content as well as the technical realization. So my first question in two parts for you, Abdul Rahman, is how do you assess looking back uh, this development of your career um, with regard to developing your style? And also, um, what would you say were your most um, valuable experiences that helped you next uh, first of all uh, thank you for uh, having me today i am uh, grateful to nyu and sorbonne for uh, screening my films uh, to answer uh, your first question 
I think because the, there was a gap between each film, so the development was not just like in directing or style, it was also like a, a personal development for me with the, each project. And uh, it reflected my uh, uh, point of view at that time uh, when I made those films. And um, the second question, um, it was about which of those experiences uh, was most valuable. Um, I would say that each and every experience was valuable for me because it, each of them helped me learn something. And uh, with each film, I made mistakes. And if I didn't make those mistakes, I wouldn't have learned from them. And uh, all of those experiences added up to help me in my um, experience today as a filmmaker when I'm making films. So you take on different roles um, in the production process, but uh, you still, as every filmmaker, um, rely on a, on a team. So maybe you can say a little bit about how you choose your team. Yeah. Um, well, it's all about the team that you end up working with, because uh, people think that the only person who matters in a film is the director and the actors. But there is a huge team that elevates the director and the actor and they push you to look good and they do their best to bring your vision to life in the best way possible. So in my case, I have met so many people throughout the years as a student and as a filmmaker. And uh, I think I've, I've had good connections over the years and I've met people who I can trust. So it's, it's very important when you uh, try to find your place in the screen that uh, you also try to find your crew, people who you can rely on and uh, keep working with and uh, people who you can trust that the, they will have your best interest at heart and they will give to these projects as if it is their own. So that's extremely important when choosing your team. So Cleo already mentioned that you have a new project. I know you recently wrapped a new film um, and that despite the COVID restrictions, um, can you say a little bit about the film as well as what were the extra difficulties? Yeah. Um, well, I just finished uh, filming and it's uh, currently in post-production. Uh, I don't want to give away the story because it's a bit early, but uh, I have to say this was my hardest film to make. <laughs> I'm not sure because of, of the pandemic or the situation in general, but it was a really challenging project to pull off. So I salute everybody who was with me and the crew because without them, I would have never been able to make this happen. I hope they all hear you. And um, it's International Women's Day today, so especially in Laimon, the wife is a very strong character in other films of yours, including the Bambua Revolution, have um, a special concern um, in this regard. Maybe you can say what inspires you to create these characters? Uh, well, what inspires me is real life and I tend to uh, tell stories about women because the women around me inspire me every day. And I think that women have it much harder than men in this region. So um, I think that uh, I find their journey very inspiring because they keep pushing themselves and, you know, working hard where they are. And I think that um, they end up having to work more than us men who sometimes have it easier because of uh, uh, there is less pressure on us to, uh, in certain areas. 
So I I'm really inspired by these women and uh, uh, regarding my films, I'm always inspired by the people I meet and the stories that I hear. So all of my films are uh, based or inspired by uh, true stories or real people that I have encountered. And uh, for me, like those films is like a love letter to those people who I met. Very, very nicely to put it. Um, and with regard to that, um, reflecting on real life, uh, a special interest of mine is also the multilingual, the polyglot nature of the region. And you reflect on that in the, the films we have seen, at least several languages. Um, is that uh, also of urgency to you? And maybe will you emphasize on this in future projects as well? Sorry, what was your question? The, the, the different languages that come together. That goes yeah. along with reflecting on, on everyday life. Yes. Is that uh, what I've touched? Uh, I've touched upon that a bit with some of my films, like in Gafa, you had the school teacher, and in Bishkara, you, the main character was the maid. So I definitely intend to keep uh, implementing that with my future films, because this is the reality of our life here. And I, I don't want to make a film with just Emirati people in it, because uh, by nature, we mingle with all the nationalities. So that only reflects the reality of our life here, and uh, it has to be that way, in my opinion. And in this future, I think there is a feature film. Uh, yes, of course, uh, I would love to make a feature film one day. Uh, it's still a bit early. I'm still fresh from my last short film. But I'm definitely thinking about ideas and I will, inshallah, I will start writing something soon because I feel that after my last experience, I, I want to make an experience that will last longer than five shooting days. Like, I feel like I'm ready to shoot a film for even a month. We look forward to the result. <laughs> And is there, um, though you have, uh, as I said, uh, uh, worked in different areas in the production process, is there something you haven't uh, done yourself that you would like to try out? Um, well, I've, I've tried, like uh, when I was in film school, I tried to do all the different positions on film set. Uh, my preference is directing and writing. I like to write and direct my own films. Uh, but I recently tried uh, voice acting. So I'm thinking maybe I would like to try acting at some point. But uh, I'm not very comfortable in front of the camera. I feel more natural behind the camera. But uh, you never know, you know, if the right opportunity comes. Thinking about acting um, in uh, Nagafa, you were working with uh, family members, right? As one of the actors. Uh, I was working with what? One of your actors in that film is a family member. Was that a uh, uh, special challenge? Yeah. The the main actor who was playing the role of Nagafa, he's actually my cousin. And uh, But usually whenever I cast for my films, I do a long process of auditions. And I try to work with uh, non-actors because sometimes they give you something which uh, trained actors wouldn't be able to give you. Like uh, in terms of they, they are more... Uh, they act like themselves and sometimes it 
serves them well when they are being themselves on the camera. Yeah, this is uh, often, especially with the um, child characters. I mean, you can think of um, when I see when I saw you, for example, and uh, also Katanam. These uh, directors who deliberately make the choice to work with non-professionals. I think it happens in particular with um, child characters. Um, yeah, sometimes child actors will surprise you. Like when I was directing Nagafa, I thought it would be really hard to direct first time child actors, but they were completely natural and I didn't have to do any takes because they enjoyed doing it. And maybe because they are different than adults, adults maybe can be robotic in front of the camera. They are too self-conscious. And maybe kids don't have that uh, pressure and they just uh, like to go with the flow. So I think that really helps. So we received some questions from the audience. So if you, um, if you uh, I will just I try to, to sum up, but we had uh, especially a comment on the optimistic uh, uh, nature of you uh, in your film. So if you look at Nagafa or uh, Bashkara, the both are have an happy end with the, you know, the situation being resolved. Um, so someone was like, uh, you know, wonder, wondering a little bit about this optimistic nature of yours. Um, is it something you want to put in your film? Do you want that it carry this kind of uh, positive message with the solution, offering a solution to people watching the film? Or is it just um, the way you see, you know, um, maybe your the, the actual situation? Yeah. Um, well, I like to have uh, an optimistic touch, especially when the films are showing suffering throughout. So I think it's a good payoff for the audience to have some satisfying closure, you know, to these stories. Uh, but uh, interestingly enough, uh, for uh, one of my films, Bishkara, the original ending was much darker because uh, when she received the flying ticket, uh, at, uh, the initial ending was that she would go to see her daughter who was sick and that she would find out that her daughter passed away. But uh, People felt like I did like a test screening and the people, the audience felt that it was too disturbing and uh, ending it with just the flying ticket made the, uh, gave it a whole different meaning. It showed that there is some hope and uh, in general as a person, like I like to believe that there is hope or there is light at the end of the tunnel. So I think my work reflects that. Yeah, someone, someone said that uh, the story of uh, Beshkara, uh, um, she said, breaks my heart and soul. Uh, it's true, it's very, um, very uh, sad during the, the, like the impossibility of communication between the both, but also the, the situation itself. Um, so the person was asking if, um, what was exactly, like, did you have a purpose when doing uh, or tackling such a uh, subject? Uh, did you want it to make a difference or to make like, a, I guess, um, people more aware of the behavior and targeting, uh, as per the common say, Emirati families uh, first? Um, was it like a special purpose? Would you uh, want it to well, whenever I... awareness? Yeah, well, I, like whenever I think of things, I like to think of uh, social issues and uh, things that exist within our environment. And uh, I like to talk about subjects that people usually shy away from or are in denial that they exist. But uh, at the same time, I try to show all sides of the story. So for example, in Bishkara, uh, she, like they, you see that they are being harsh on the maid, but you also see in the end that the grandmother is lonely she needs the maid because she feels like uh, like she's her daughter so 
uh, I think that's my approach. Like whenever I make films, I try to show that there is no, there is no black and white, and there is a lot of gray in between, and it's important to, uh, for that to come across. Hmm. Um. And uh, we have uh, another question regarding uh, Leymon and the end also. Um, so um, the person Samia was asking, what are the solutions on the table for such a, a deep issue like the one you presented in, in Leymon? Um, and what is exactly like, you know, for the ending, what are the, what are you trying to, you know, to say at this, with this ending? Yeah. Well, I think the ending is self-explanatory. Like you see her for the first time thinking about herself and doing something for herself when she spent the whole time just thinking of ways to surprise her husband or to make him smile. And uh, for me, like when writing that film, I really wanted this uh, character to reach a point in the end where she will finally notice herself because she's trying to get noticed, but she's not lo noticing herself as well. So that was the main purpose behind the story. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we have more questions that I'm receiving them uh, with a little bit of, of delay. So, um, I, I think, um, yeah, the, the question of the ending and the, the choice of topics are actually um, uh, important for, for people in the audience, uh, especially on Beshkara. Uh, again, the question of the, the, the choice of this topic um, was, was raised again. And especially what kind of, what you wanted to emphasize uh, in this story? Is it like, you know, the perspective of the domestic worker and the suffering that it can create? Um, you know, especially, I think, I recall uh, around the, the phone, uh, how it could be important object uh, because it's the only link with the family. Uh, so you, you really emphasize on that and, and what can it uh, mean? Um, well, it's, it's, should be, it's, it's mean nothing almost for the family when they take it uh, from her, not, not many understanding that uh, importance. So did it something you wanted to emphasize or you wanted more to emphasize on, on maybe the relationship? Itself that is created of a, of a dependency uh, of Emirati family or local family being dependent on their domestic worker um, and domestic worker being in this position of, of dependency but uh, not being able to have their own passport or their own uh, to make their own choices. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it was one of the main issues I wanted to highlight is the codependency of the grandmother. Like, uh, it's very common, like, to find uh, ladies, old ladies living with their uh, housemaid by themselves. Like, I, I've known a lot of uh, women in my family who had to go through that. So I was very interested to... Uh, you know, shed light on that, you know, what, what's their life like and uh, what kind of connection is that, you know, because there are two people who are not related from two different countries and they don't speak each other's language. So I wanted to read how they adapt to each other and how the family is heavily reliant on the maid. And without her, it's almost like they cannot function. Like the grandmother cannot function without her so much so she will not let her travel. Like this is her home now, and she has to stay there. So I was really interested in this whole scenario. Okay, so I'm reading the question at the same time. Uh, but just, uh, um, it reminded me of, of um, I was really, I found it interesting your use actually of, of new technology or the importance of of uh, internet and, and phone, especially on, on Leymon, we, th we see how everybody is relying on it either for entertainment or for finding uh, information and knowledge. Uh, you have the whole thing around the recipe that the woman is taking from YouTube. And we have, of course, the, the core uh, of the issue between the husband and the wife around the, the, the social media and uh, 
Um, is it something also that uh, I feel it was like kind of a, one of the major uh, subject of Lemon, even though it looked at the background, but I was wondering if it's something you wanted to tackle also this maybe uh, dependency on social uh, media or um, and how it's like they intruded uh, in our daily life, how much place they are taking in our daily life and in our relationships. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, like social media has really impacted our life in a huge way. But I, f I felt that when I was making this film that the older generations are consuming it differently than the younger ones. Maybe the younger ones have some awareness, like not to take it too seriously or to step away from social media for a while. But I found that with the, like older generations, like my parents, they are really hooked to their phones and they can't tell what is real and what not. And they feel intimidated, like they feel they have to catch up, you know. And uh, uh, that's a lot of pressure on them. So I wanted to show that through Laymoon, like she was on her phone all the time checking new things. He was on the phone looking at other women. So it's about how you know, it's, it influences people of different age groups, different ways, and how they consume it differently. Okay. Yeah, it's it's actually very interesting and nice. As uh, I see most of my students, when they, they think about social media, they think about the impact on, on youth and young generation. But I think, yeah, it's a very... Um, it's a different perspective and different kind of relationship between uh, maybe the older generation that didn't grow up with it. Um, and we are all the time focused on this young generation. Uh, but so that's a very interesting uh, take. And um, yeah, I, I really like it. Um, so looking again at the question. Um, yeah, so we have again question on, on the choice of subject. That's really, uh, I think your, your also your, your perspective and your choices of, of not easy and sensible uh, subject is is really um, noticed by uh, by our audience. So one of the questions is about the bullying or again in, in Agafa. Um, and the person said, I'm an educator and know how hard it is uh, for us to deal with it in school. Um, so sh the person asked uh, how you developed the screenplay. Uh, did you research or, or uh, is the movie um, a tool to change maybe a perspective of, of children? Um, and this I will add personally, like, was it screened, for example, in the schools or, um, or not? Yeah. Well, the instruction for Nagafa came from uh, real life, as with all my films. Uh, it was inspired by uh, one of my classmates who was even called Nagafa, and I even contacted him years after we graduated while I was doing research for the film. So, um, yeah, that was like a part of my research, and uh, it's something I have experienced also myself. So that helped me as well in uh, writing the film. And uh, in terms of schools, uh, uh, I think it was shown in many schools, because, uh, it went viral on YouTube, it reached around 7 million views. So I've heard from a lot of kids that they have seen it. So I'm, I'm glad that it's starting, it opened up the conversation. And I think especially now, like there is more awareness about bullying than before. There's like uh, uh, education programs or like weekly campaigns that happen. Uh, every year, so I think that's that's wonderful, and I hope the conversation keeps going until bullying really stops because it's still happening. Okay, so you had a lot. You have a lot of compliments. Uh, of course, I maybe I should share them with you too. So thank you for this interesting films, amazing and impressive work. Uh, you covered so much in a short amount of time. Uh, each of the films highlights an important social issue in contemporary Emirati society. So we have again a question about Nagafa and especially one um, 
it's an element of, on the story. Um, so the film starts in a classroom with students taking an exam, trying to bully the, their classmates and cheat uh, at the first time. Then the mother of the bullied student uh, breaks in the classroom. Um, so the person is asking, what message are you trying to communicate with this scene? Um, so I guess uh, the mother, um, the intervention on, of the mother that actually, I think, make it worse uh, in a way. Or yeah, I think uh, I wanted to show to... some. I don't know, yeah. in my interpretation, it make it actually I worse. Guess... It, it, do, it does actually make it worse because sometimes when families try to help their kids, they are not uh, aware of what's the right way to do it. So they end up embarrassing the kid and putting him in more trouble. And that's a, a very common situation, at least when I was back in school, like whenever you would complain about a classmate, then the next day your parent will show up and point to that person. So maybe that's not the best way to deal with uh, such situations. And I also wanted to show that the kid was like relying on outside factors to help him until the end where he finally had to, he was forced to take an action by himself could no longer rely on others to save them. Um, okay, we have also a question about the audience. Uh, so you answer maybe for, for Nagafa, or especially on, on the, the fact it was, uh, it had some uh, success on, on YouTube. What about the other films? Maybe what, um, how was it received by audience uh, in the UAE? Um, and, and where are there uh, differences depending on the type of audience? I'm thinking about um, Yeah, I mean, there was different reactions. Yeah. I mean, uh, Leymoun was my most recent film, so I, I, I remember the last few screenings, there were uh, women in the audience with their kids, and they were uh, really happy with the film. And some of them came and talked to me. They told me that this film is basically their life. So uh, it, it's sad, but at the same time, I'm, I'm glad that it was able to reach to them and maybe give, show them a perspective that they didn't think about. Because uh, it's easy to get stuck into that uh, cycle. You know, people assume that you are selfless if you stop thinking about yourself. But uh, I really wanted to push that message on the film that you have to think about yourself first before you can think about other people. Well, that's interesting because we had a comment from uh, someone from the audience who also asked. I noticed that it was kind of a common point between the three shorts uh, regarding the fact that people actually don't care about others and who seems really not to pay attention to other, uh, others' feelings. Um, so the person was saying that in Le Moon, um, actually your movie stops before the husband like apologize or reunites with his wife or, you know, or they fight indefinitely. Um, so uh, the person was wondering if we, we do know if he will uh, at, at some point um, um, will to, if he will to, uh, to apologize. But it seems that it's a main theme around your work. It's this question of indifference to the others' uh, suffering. Uh, would you agree uh, to that? Do you feel it's a special concern maybe of yours? Uh, maybe it's a, a subconscious thing. Maybe it's something that I think about on a personal level. So it, uh, you know, it transcends into my films but it's definitely not something that was intentional. Uh, for me, it's about the story and, uh, you know, showing what the person is really going through in an authentic way. And maybe that's uh, an added point that uh, I did not intend. Okay. Um, and then I will take the last question because we still have just two minutes. Uh, it's, a, it's a different kind of question. Uh, so it's Sara asking, can you tell us some directors or movies that inspired you, especially uh, from the Middle East? You can... Uh, well, there's many directors. I, I love the work of the 
Palestinian director. Her name is Anna Marie. I watched her last film, Wajib, and it's one of my favorite, favorite Arabic movies. And I also love the work of uh, Haifal Mansour, who did Wajda. Wajda is one of my all-time favorite movies. And it, I think it was one of the first films in this region that really showed how life is like in the Middle East. And it really spoke to me on a personal level. Like, it, I found it very relatable. And I hope I can do such kind of films, like uh, future films in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Um... And of course, uh, we are impatient to see uh, your next short and the future uh, feature uh, I'm sure you will do uh, in the coming uh, months or years, whenever it's possible. So we wish you uh, all the success and we'll be glad to also welcome you again in Cinemana for uh, the next um, and the screening of your next uh, film. Uh, thank you very much for attending and, and being with us tonight and for all your questions. Uh, thank you, the, Dr. Doris, and for your also for your discussion with Abdelhaman. It was really interesting, and I'm glad we could have um, you. Even uh, we are online now, and it's um, always frustrating not to be uh, on stage and, and having a, a more uh, natural exchange with everybody and more like uh, genuine conversation. But thank you very much. Hopefully, um, next time. Yes, hopefully on the next time it will be on, on one of our campuses. Thank you very much and uh, have a good evening, everybody. Thank you.